Bernie Dog here. Today I'm going to take a look at these Radius 46 stoves and their unique safety release valve caps. Now I happen to have three different flavors of these, but only the one on the right hand side actually goes to the Radius 46. The catalogs will tell us that there were at least four different varieties of these caps. And the two other ones I have are from other liquid fueled appliances made by Radius. I'm lucky enough that I have two Radius 46 stoves, both of which have the safety release valve cap. The one that I'm opening up now is in the kind of condition you generally find the safety release valve cap. The outer cap unscrews to reveal a very stout spring. The spring rides in a brass piston arrangement. Beneath the piston are two seals. One is a thin brass sheet and the other is a thin piece of rubber or rubber-like material. Because the thin brass sheet is held deflected by the spring-loaded power of the piston, over time it develops stress cracks. Stress cracking of the brass seal will cause the safety release valve cap to fail. This rubber seal is hard and brittle and is typical of what you find in most of these safety release valve caps. The constant exposure to fuel and subsequent age have caused it to distort and harden into this weird shape. In my other safety release cap, the components are fresh and almost as good as new. These are not replacement components, these are original components. You can see that the rubber washer is flat or nearly so and that it still remains flexible. There is no carving of the washer, it is just a flat washer. It's not three-dimensional in any way. The brass sheet is intact and without any cracking in good shape. There are two seal points inside the interior of the cap. This inner raised ring acts to seal pressure from leaving the cap. The outer ring is what the outer cap clamps both the rubber and the brass seals against to create the seal around the outside of the cap. There's a very nice machine surface on the underside of that outer cap that's going to press down on both the rubber and the brass portions of the inner parts of the cap against the ring. The wear circles are very obvious on the rubber seal where they contact the two sealing places inside the inner cap. The brass seal will push down on the rubber seal by being pushed down by the outer cap. That's what creates a seal around the outside ring inside the inner cap. But the inner seal is created by the pressure of the piston and the spring pushing down on the brass and rubber seals against that center inner small ring. If you hold a straight edge across the outer ring, you can see a distinct gap between the end of the edge and the inner ring. That inner ring is set down a little lower. It's the powerful spring that pushes it down against the seal. These safety release caps are different than those you see from Optimus. Because of the two holes in the center that go through into that inner chamber, the seal inside of the safety release cap is always kept wet or damp by fuel. So it's basically bathed in fuel pretty much all the time. With normal sloshing about, you can even end up with little puddles of fuel inside this inner chamber that's constantly in contact with this big rubber seal. This animation demonstrates how the center of the cap is where the seal is maintained. As pressure increases, the fuel vapor escapes through the center of the cap. When the interior pressure in the tank gets high enough, it will push open the piston and the two seals, both brass and rubber, to release the pressure from the tank. I believe that the ease with which these caps can be assembled and disassembled by hand without special tools indicates that they were meant to be inspected 
and refurbished on a regular basis. The brass disc is kept under stress by the piston and this is going to likely cause fractures over time. And as we know, that rubber gasket is kept in contact with fuel almost all the time. So it's going to deform and expand as rubber gaskets of that era did. Gaskets that look like this are deformed and are not something to try to emulate. The gaskets, the rubber gaskets, should be flat. I'll show you how to make both the rubber gaskets and the brass gaskets in your own shop in the next video. Stay tuned!